Welcome to my first video of the cramps board for the BeagleBone Black and 3D printing that I've designed. Uh, there it is down there running. Uh, I got some LEDs for the FET output states. Power supply is a ATX. It's a small ATX power supply from a, a shuttle case. Uh, just a small form factor ATX. And that is turned on by the beagle bone itself with the connector on the cramps. And another interesting thing about the cramps board, uh, you might notice uh, my printer's on. I got the, the LEDs are glowing, the fans going, you might be able to hear that. Uh, there's an e-stop loop now, which is this connector right here. I got a jumper over it, which is what you use if you don't actually have an e-stop switch wired in. Uh, if I was, to, if I pull this, that shuts everything down. The power supply turns off because I've got that turned on by the beagle bone itself. Um, and in addition to that, uh, the, if your power supply did not turn off, all the hardware drivers are disabled. The stepper drivers are disabled. The FETs are turned off. Uh, if I put the take it out of e-stop there well that takes out a hardware e-stop but Linux CNC is still in e-stop still not turned on we have to turn the machine back on there we go everything comes back up again and our uh, the extruder cooled down a little bit I'll let that warm up and when it's ready we'll start a print I have a little Linux CNC key fob that I typically use to print. It goes quick and easy. Fairly quick anyway. Alright, extruder looks about ready. So let's see, is plastic coming out? Yeah, there we go. It's squirting plastic. Alright, so let's get rid of that and start our program. And at this point, it's just a relatively boring, yet another 3D print on YouTube. Uh, now, there are a few issues with the um, hardware design. It's the first version of the board, so that's not a big surprise. Uh, nothing really catastrophic. Um, the three actual issues you might want to fix, uh, the biggest one's probably the ADC inputs. Um, turns out that the protection diodes and the whole protection circuitry in general is interfering with the ADC inputs since they're 1.8 volts and it's just such low voltage levels that uh, the leakage current from the diodes is causing problems. So I just yanked it, um, pulled the uh, 14148 diodes and the shunt regulator and that makes it cheaper and simpler and it works better. So the only thing is it's a little easier to fry your A to D inputs, but uh, just don't do anything silly like plug 12 volts into them. Uh, also, there is still a 4.7K series resistor in uh, line with the A to D inputs, so you have to do something a little bit more than just uh, maybe touch it to something to, uh, to zap the inputs. So um, that's more protection than the original ramps had. It was just wired straight from the thermistor into the pin on the microcontroller. So hopefully that'll uh, that'll keep you from frying anything too bad. The other two uh, issues are related to the the E squared prom. It's an ID that the Cape Manager software reads to load the appropriate uh, device tree overlay. That may entirely even be going away. The newer kernels don't have a Cape Manager yet, and uh, that's not used by Linux C anyway. Uh, Linux CNC anyway. I typically load. Uh, this is now using a universal overlay and I had created individual overlays for the board since I typically use them differently than the designer had intended uh, in terms of the PRU outputs or the GPIO or whatever. So now I went and made a uh, universal overlay where you can basically assign whatever functions you want to to the pins for PWM or serial or UART, uh, timer, etc. Uh, GPIO, PRU out, PRU in. Um, and you just load one overlay and then you set up the pins however it is you want to use them. Uh, anyway, so the E squared address is wrong. It's uh, the most limited address bit is low and it should be high for the uh, the Cape ID. Uh, you could fix that if you wanted to. It's an SO8. You could lift the pin and tie it high. And uh, the other thing is the BeagleBone technical reference manual says I'm supposed to have 5.6K pull-ups on the I squared C line and I don't have that exact 
value and I don't have a pull up on the 3.3 volt side. Uh, there's a pull up on a five on the five volt side after some level translation, so it works fine. It's just not exactly correct. The other changes. Um, Go look at the to-do list on the GitHub for the PC board and you'll see all the little niggly things that I identified while I was building it and uh, testing it out that I'd like to change for the next version. Nothing really critical. Stuff like uh, making sure all the plus and minus sides of all the FET outputs um, match the power inputs and things so that you can uh, easily remember which side's the plus and which side's the minus and are less likely to mess things up when you're hooking it uh, uh, hooking in the wires, um, moving a little bit of things around. Uh, some of the the pins from the screw terminals are cl very close to the DC power jack on the Beagle Bone. Nothing's in danger of shorting out. It's just a big chunk of plastic, but uh, I like to have a little bit more clearance than that. Uh, so I'll move some things around. Um, just stuff like that makes it easier to either put together or uh, easier to use. But the current boards uh, seem to be pretty much completely functional. Have yet to try it at 24 volts, have to see how that works. It ought to work okay. Um, what else do I need to do? Uh, oh, I need to, need to actually test out the EEPROM. Oh, it's doing the Linux CNC part. I always like that. It's more fun than just watching infill. Yeah, we'll get a, hopefully you can still see that. I think there's about, uh, Three layers of this, maybe, maybe four. And it'll be done. Now, uh, compared to my other videos, uh, this time I'm using the TI uh, driver chips. Um, oh, the number's escaping me right at the moment, but uh, not the um, standard Pololu with the uh, Allegro chips that I've normally used. Uh, these are the ones they do uh, uh, 132nd micro step, not just 116th. And uh, they are substantially quieter. I was a little surprised. I hooked up it's, uh, the system sounds different. It sounds quieter, and that's, that's the stepper drivers. And it looks like I need to do a little bit more calibration work on my printer and temperatures, but... Uh, I just now got this working, so I think I'm using the wrong settings from the config file, an old config file, but uh, yeah, it's enough to squirt some plastic out and get something to print. And it's looking a little bit better. I don't know if you can see this on the video or not. Uh, well, let's see. Well, that's going. Um, here. It's bright lights. So this is the actual uh, circuit board. I got several of these from OSH Park. As always, the OSH Park folks do a nice job. Uh, the boards were uh, um, fabricated quickly, sent to me. Uh, total time was about a week and a half, and uh, I got three boards for right around $75, $76. That is quite a deal if you have ever purchased PC boards commercially. Um, and uh, quality is excellent. Love the gold on these. That means you can leave them sitting around and solder it up six months from now, and it'll still uh, take solder well. Um, standard commercial silver or uh, tin coatings uh, tend to tend to uh, oxidize and become very hard to solder, uh, which is important especially for these little fine pitch parts. Um, like uh, that's the that's the little FET bus chip there and I got a there's about five of these uh, resistor networks that are hard to solder. Everything else is pretty easy to do by hand. So if you can do the resistor networks and this guy or find someone that'll do that for you, the rest of it goes together quite well, very big. Uh, no real parts on the back except a couple of connectors to go to the beagle bone. Um, in addition to the P8P9, there's a serial port header that goes here that lets you um, brings the serial port out to the top of the board so that you can still see your uh, boot console. Very important if you're trying to debug uh, kernel issues or any kind of boot problems. You gotta have that serial port terminal. Uh, you can play with U-boot. You can uh, watch the kernel log messages. And uh, there it's done. So here we go. And Linux CNC for the win. Okay, there we are. Thanks for watching.